Hi everyone. There aren't many topics of interest for our community at Bloomer Boomer that we have not written or talked about a lot. Even the awkward ones. You know, it's weird in a way because there is a ton of material here at Double B about things like sex and cosmetic surgery, internet dating, finances, things that seem more on the edgy side, if you will, but something that affects nearly 7% of the population is still spoken about in hushed tones and kept in the closet. What is it? It's depression. No one wants to talk about it, but it's too often the elephant in the room. But we will talk about it today with award-winning uh, New Zealand author and depression expert Brent Williams, who is on his global book tour to discuss this epidemic gripping 322 million worldwide. Now, depression is not shy. It hits men and women of all backgrounds, ages, and colors. Now, his new book, Out of the Woods, A Journey Through Depression and Anxiety, for men and women to find refuge not only because of its stunning graphics and visuals, but also in the way it presents an authentic personal story along with the latest research findings and practical self-help strategies. Out of the Woods is William's personal experience of depression and anxiety. In a moment, we will talk to the author and depression expert, Brent Williams. Out of the Woods, a journey through depression and anxiety. Well, our guest is author and depression expert Brent Williams, Out of the Woods, A Journey Through Depression and Anxiety. Brent, thank you so much for joining us. This is really a remarkable, remarkable book. Thank you. You know, <laughs> excuse me, I've got to just, first of all, bring to everyone's attention the drawings and captions that help uh, take us out of a clinical viewpoint and helps us understand what is really meant by depression. I, I think it's brilliant. I just love the way you've done that. What what Thank captivated you. you to do it this way? And I think I know the answer in a way. But what captiva captivated you to do it this way than something more in a, in a textual form? Well, I think there's, there's thousands of books on depression. And... Um, I didn't want to just add another one. I wanted to really reach people who were depressed because when I was depressed, I couldn't read. I literally didn't have the concentration. My mind was such a mess. I couldn't finish a sentence. I couldn't finish a line, let alone a sentence. So I wanted to share my story with people who were at that real bottom of the barrel stage of depression when they needed help the most, not when they were, you know, they were a bit better and they're more capable and able to read. Um, more scholarly or informative books. So I really wanted to grab them with some visuals, emotional visuals, very personal about my own journey. And sort of, if you like, put my arm around them and take them on this, take them on the stories for them to understand their own depression and most importantly, how they can actually overcome it. You know, what struck me in going through the uh, pages is uh, it, really brings to life in a way without you know lecturing someone uh, or speaking down to someone it brings to life the reality of uh, facing it and uh, and then maybe discovering what you need to do about it and and somehow or another by seeing it done in in this graphic fashion it uh, it's a little bit easier to uh, to uh, swallow if you will well, absolutely. You've absolutely nailed it. And it was for me, believe it or not, the, the, the making of the book was part of my journey in facing my own depression, putting a shape around the character depression. And because up until then, it's this just this amorphous mass, which just takes over you, changes your thinking, undermines you, um, keeps you isolated and hidden from the world and keeps you from talking about it. Um, you know, you don't think you're worthy of people in, entering into conversations about de depression. You're too, too ashamed, feeling too worthless. So um, it's very much the book and developing these characters in the book in an illustrative way was very much part of my own way of facing depression. So you've captured it perfectly. I don't believe people can actually get well until they face their depression and really understand it and, and be honest about what they're going through. 
Yeah, and accepting it. Now, something about depression that I hope you can maybe clarify for me is, is that really the difference between uh, feeling generally crappy and glum one day and, and depression. Now, I've described, um, you know, on occasion, you know, feeling depressed and uh, I think it's just a, a, a feeling that I have at the moment, you know, uh, maybe just kind of overall, just that day I'm feeling kind of crappy. <laughs> um, can you help me understand that a little bit better? Yeah, I think the thing is, and of course I had many bad days where I'd say, oh, I feel so depressed today, prior to actually getting depression. The difference is when you, when you, um, you say, oh, I'm feeling pretty bad today, I'm feeling a bit depressed, is you still yourself you you are who you understand um who you've been all your life in depression it's like transports you into another area where you lose that connection with yourself you, you it's very scary and you don't you don't think you don't behave in in a way that's familiar the world changes around you it's it's very painful yet it's it's a pain that you can't describe like a headache or something it's a, it's a pain of um no emotion it's the pain of being lost and it's the very difficult things to try and describe until you're in there and um but very different from your casual feeling of just feeling pretty low and down and life's not treating you so well today or this week so that so, might help someone understand uh, when they might be feeling uh, badly to help distinguish between true depression and just not having a good day. I think it is, but everyone's different and some get it less seriously, but it's still damaging, it's still chronic, it can go on for some time. They can ignore it, they can push it away, they can still function, they can still go to their jobs and they can still... but. A certain parts of their lives, the color of their life has gone, the enjoyment, the things that used to spark them and inspire them, that's sort of gone. So they're, they're living a half life. So that's another side. My depression was a bit more of a wham, I'm down and I'm completely um, unable to do a hell of a lot. But so it does, it does, um, it does shift and different characteristics for different people. I think the key thing is length of time. How long are they feeling down? And if it's a continuous, a fairly you know lengthy period and it's going on and they notice things are changing their life, they're not doing what they used to do. They're saying, maybe they're saying no to friends and engagements and invitations. They'd rather be on their own. They'd rather withdraw rather than be engaged. Are there some of the, the danger signs that, that, that could suggest that that person is actually in clinical depression. Now, is when you've been um, diagnosed as uh, having depression, uh, is that something that is permanent? Do you, just you know, as a, as an alcoholic or a drug a drug addict, uh, it's a it's something that they have a permanent issue that they will have the rest of their life, or is there a, a way to look at it differently than that? Again, I think it, it's such a personal disease and it does shift for different people. It's different for different people. And I think the important thing here is um, when you get hold, when you, um, you know, the earlier you can get hold of the illness, understand it and recover, I think the greater chances you have that you can really say, I've left it behind. It's no longer an issue. But I think. Excuse me. If, I think if it's if you're midlife or later in life, and maybe you've had a couple of doses, and it's you've let it linger for quite a while before you've got help and got out of it, I think you're far more likely for it to to be a little bit more pervasive in your life, and you're at greater risk. Every time you get depressed, you have a greater risk for it happening again. But this doesn't shouldn't mean that people start panicking about that. You can always. And make progress out of depression um, as long as you do good things to help yourself as long as you get help to it, yeah now it seems that you you can't really talk um, about depression without also addressing some fairly powerful drugs that uh, may get administered uh, don't the two go hand in hand to some extent they um, 
They can do, but I don't think it's the only solution. I think there are there are many ways to tackle depression, and for for some people, I think drugs are an important option, and they should be seriously considered. But there are also a range of drugs um, that can be used, and some of them work, some of them don't. Some of them have side effects which are pretty intolerable; others are not so bad. But I think for people that are at the lower end of the depression scale, if you want to see it like that. The, the ones who are what you call mild to moderately depressed, the evidence suggests that exercise, sorting your sleep out, um, diet, being around people, um, mo you know, motivating yourself, um, finding ways that you can engage in life again. Fancy word, behavioural activation, but it's basically just doing good stuff. If you can somehow get support to do those things, get those things sorted out, they will work as well as taking an antidepressant. And the thing people forget with antidepressants is that it's not like an antibiotic if you've got an infection. You take it, clears up the infection, and you carry on with your life. But that's how a lot of people see antidepressants, and I think that's dangerous. They should be a helper. They should be a support. They should be a way they lift you up to the point of which you can help yourself and make a more, more sustained recovery. And I think that's the important thing that the, the controversy around medication tends to obscure, that the drugs won't necessarily keep you well. They might get you to a certain point and then they might, then they might stop being, being so effective and then you're back in the same place. And if you haven't done anything else, what have you learned? What skills have you got to keep yourself well? And I think that's the important thing. Yeah. Use drugs if you need to, and you need good advice to do that. But for goodness sake, work on all the other things which we know keep people well. The basics in life, what we're designed, how we're designed to live, to move our bodies, eat good food, get out and see sunlight, be around in good company, and live, you know, the, the, the pillars of a good life have to be followed. You can't just take an antidepressant and think, well, that's me, that'll sort it out, and I won't have to worry about depression again it's likely to come back, it's likely to not to clear up as well as you hope, and it's likely to be a, you know, a, a problem for you in the future. You have to, it's a whole life experience that you have yeah. to really... I really like it. the way you make it simple and to understand and <clears throat> don't get too much into the medical terminology. And it seems that there was a time uh, that people could just uh, go to a psychiatrist or a psychologist and talk through their problems. Is, is that still a, a good option? Absolutely. For, <clears throat> for me, um, talking therapy was critical. I mean, I couldn't have done it on my own without it. I found a very good psychotherapist and um, formed a strong relationship with her. And, you know, she guided me out. And, and yeah, OK, I did a lot of the work, but I needed to, to every week go and see her. It was like an anchor in my life to actually to talk about what the issues were, to understand my depression, and for her to support, coach me to, uh, to get him well. It was absolutely critical. Yeah. And you know, uh, Brent, I don't know if we can really talk about this discussion about depression uh, without addressing the issue of uh, celebrity suicide, people like fashion designer Kate Spade and celebrity chef Anthony Bourdain. Um, you know, maybe you can just touch upon that, if you will. Yeah, I think suicide's the, suicide is the, um, you know, it's obviously a hugely tragic issue for, for so many people. It, it ripples through families, communities. It's very tragic. And it is where depression can take you. The, the, the funny thing is with, funny, the, the mm -hmm. tragedy about yeah. suicide is that when you're depressed, um, Suicide is actually, when you're seriously depressed, suicide is not actually as tough as it may sound for people who are well. How could you, look, you know, how could you take your life? When you're depressed, depression actually makes you think it's a very good idea. It's a logical thing to do. Um, life seems so painful. Living is such a struggle that suicide seems a very, you know, it seems a good option. So you, you have to catch people before they get to that state and people can look well one day and then commit suicide the next. It's not an easy thing to detect, but they don't have to be on the floor down and out before you think, oh, well, that person's so depressed they're likely to commit suicide. You know, they can be functioning in a job, you know, 
connecting with people and then the next day they're not. You don't quite know what's going on on people's minds. Yeah, that was something I was going to ask you about because I, it, it can be so, debil so debilitating, but there are people who have very productive lives in spite of it. They live, they're productive, they appear productive, but they, they, they struggle internally. Everyone who's got depression is living, I call it a half-life or a quarter or a quarter life. You know, it's not a full life. It's not a life where it's rich and engaged and well and living to your full capacity. It's, it's impaired. And it's impaired often in ways we don't see that sparks suddenly somebody decides to take their life and, and can't see that the loved ones around them, the people that they love, that love them, um, that somehow lost in, in, in their very faulty, um, mixed up minds, which is, which is, which is very sad. You know, and I've already told you how much I love the book. Uh, and, uh, it's really different from, and, and the, f the fantastic drawings. Uh, you talked a little bit about that, but, uh, maybe as we wind down here, uh, any, uh, added notes, uh, that you want to, uh, show us uh, or tell us about the book. Yeah, sure. I mean, um, the, it's been it's lovely the way people are connecting with the book and often people say I hate graphic novels but this is different hey then this is something I this you know they, they're surprised by the book and I guess the format of being a graphic novel may not seem to be everyone's cup of tea but people are reading it as if it's not a graphic novel it's, it's I, absolutely perfect it's what I wanted I wanted this to be in the in the genre of a graphic novel, because it was a good way to tell my story and tell it visually. But um, I wanted it not to be difficult for people to understand. I want to be a very accessible book. And the pictures and the very simple narrative, the very simple dialogue seems to have seems to have connected with people. So that's great. Yeah, I really agree with that. Uh, just in looking at it, it it's seems so simple, uncomplicated, and uh, and makes a, I'm sorry about this phone here, but we'll get rid of that as best we can. Um, and then for people, uh, Brent, who uh, want to get more information uh, and uh, about the book and where they can get it and so forth, uh, what what's, uh, where can people find more out about it? Okay, well, I've got a website which has um you know, more information about the book. It's got reviews and it's got some content and it's got a little blog from me about why I made the book. And people can go to that. It's um, www.outofthewoods, one word, dot co dot nz. And if they want to buy it, then it's available through most of the, all the online stores in the US and Amazon, of course. Um, Barnes and Noble and various other places. It's in some bookshops, but I can't tell you which one. So, okay. um, but go along and ask at your local bookshop, and they they can get it in very very easily. And of course, all the online shops. Beautiful. Yeah, we'll have some information on the screen for people to get more about it, uh, find out more about it. And uh, hey, Brent, thanks so much. It's a fascinating and a, a great piece of work that you've done here. Pleasure. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Our guest is author and uh, depression expert Brent Williams. Uh, here's his book, Out of the Woods, A Journey Through Depression and Anxiety. We'll be right back. Good show. Now you can see it again on YouTube and at Bloomer Boomer. We have other shows coming up with some amazing guests, so please like us on Facebook and visit us over at bloomerboomer.com. Until next time, so long.